What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome to another miniature rescue. This time, I'm going to attempt to rescue way too many minis in a very small amount of time. Honestly, there really are too many, and I don't really know why I actually agreed to do this, but it's gonna be fun. Out of all the armies in Warhammer, there is one that I've kind of always stayed away from. For one reason or another, the Necron faction has just never really done it for me. I mean, I like robots, they are fun, and space robots should be right up my alley, but there's always been something kind of weird lurking in the back of my head when it comes to these models. Let's take a trip in the way, way back machine and let me paint you a picture. Young me discovering Warhammer and picking out my army my friends playing things like Space Wolves and Chaos Space Marines, while I was the much better and way cooler Eldar of the late 90s. So good, in fact, that there has been no need for a model update in almost 20 years, but that's not really the point here. When we picked armies as kids, it was a big deal. With little to no money, the choice seemed insanely important. The army you chose was the one that you were attached to for the foreseeable future. And like favorite sports teams, the loyalty was strong. I had a friend that bought fully into the Necron faction, and I was always out for blood when we played a game. There was this almost innate inner hatred for any faction that wasn't mine, and that carried through to everyone else I was playing with at the time. Of course, it was all in good fun, and there wasn't any real reason to hold negative opinions about anyone else's army, or trash talk them, or laugh at bad dice rolls, but when I see Necron models, I remember those old times and the friend who used to field them. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with them, of course. There are some fantastic minis in the line, and I happen to have more than a few lying around that have just been waiting to be painted. Now, I think it's probably time I got beyond those childhood memories with this army by jumping in way too deep and making some new ones. Let's take a look at what we have here. A few months ago, a subscriber by the name of Dale sent me a very good-sized collection of minis, some new in box and some with paint on them. First off, I want to say thank you so much to Dale for sending me such excellent minis to help out the channel. Your kindness and generosity not only pushed me to keep going, but helped provide a ton of inspiration for me to do my absolute best when it comes to making content and painting minis. So thank you. Now Dale sent over an incredible collection of Necron models, more than enough to get a good idea of what this army is made of and more than a few of them already built with a little bit of paint on them. So a rescue is in order. The plan is to get everything out, build the rest of the boxes, and come up with a solid way to get everything painted as quickly and nicely as possible, using what will hopefully be really easy to replicate and modify painting tricks. A mouthful, but let's start here. I've been looking at a ton of ways to paint Necron models, and for the most part, it doesn't look too bad. Up to this point, I've painted a total of one model and that was accomplished with a silver Sharpie. Not the worst look, but it was way more time consuming than it was worth for an entire model. So that will definitely not be the way to go here. Specifically, Instagram has tons of amazing painters showing their fantastic work with these models. So it makes sense to get an idea of what kind of end result I want by looking through a ton of color options and going from there. A few things stick out to me right away that I actually really like. Metallic colors are an absolute must for this army. After all, they are metal skeleton warriors and it makes sense that they would maintain a metallic shine in whatever color we go for. So the first part of the plan is decided, a metallic undercoat for everything. The second thing that catches my eye is the way that most people go about the inner glow of the models. Whatever color we choose will need to be bright and easy to paint into all of the recesses on the models. And some of these guys have an absolute ton of recess details in the form of symbols, vents, and even actual damage on the armor. Lastly, the weapons generally have really nice fades on them, usually in the same color as the inner glow, which would be pretty convenient if they all matched up. The problem that leaves is finding colors that go together well enough and provide the necessary amount of contrast to make the army look good even when everything is painted in a kind of similar manner. So we need contrast between the outer armor, inner glow, and most definitely the base of the model. Three main colors that stand out without too much effort. Now that we have an idea of the basic color design, we can at least move on to the next step and probably the most important, prepping the actual army for paint. Before we continue, let me tell you about today's excellent sponsor, CMOGames.com. 
CMO Games is an epic hobby store that has been selling online for more than 20 years. They focus on Games Workshop products, almost always selling at 15% off, and they carry a wide variety of paints and supplies to get those minis painted. On top of a ton of tabletop games, board games, and TCGs, they carry hobby supplies, Pro Acryl, Vallejo, and Scale 75, just to name a few. So you can always find the supplies and paints that you need and get them shipped quickly and at a good price. CML Games also takes care of your pre-orders. So if you need to get in on the newest Games Workshop release, they go live at 12.01 a.m. on the absolute earliest day possible so you don't miss out. Head on over to cmogames.com using the affiliate link in the description below and check out this fantastic store. Using my link won't cost you anything extra, but greatly helps out the channel, so thank you. And thank you CMO Games for sponsoring miniature painting channels like this one. Now let's get back to those minis. There is no way I'm gonna be able to build this many kits and get the other models ready for painting quickly enough actually to get this video out when I want. So I'm calling in some reinforcements to help me tackle the building and quite a bit of painting. My friend Bo, who happens to also have a YouTube channel, although not at all related to Warhammer or miniature painting, has kindly agreed to come by for a solid 16 hours and help me get as much done as possible. This project is definitely more than I can handle alone, and it was awesome having a friend come in to break up the monotony of building kits all day and night to get this done. For that matter, as much as this hobby is a very solitary activity, it's always been made better and more memorable for me when I can do it with friends. Building and painting while hanging out with someone else really elevates the hobby and makes even the parts that you enjoy less that much better. We sat down, started to crack open boxes, taking our time to get the mold lines removed and make sure that the parts and pieces fit together, you know, at least properly. Since there were kits ranging from the early 2000s to now, we got a unique look into how Games Workshop has handled kits over the last 20 years, and we found some really interesting things here. The early kits, even if they were the same, tended to have issues with their castings. Not that the actual molds were bad, but the parts didn't exactly match up with the building instructions, and in at least one case, the sprues were completely different for the same kit. Two separate boxes, two different kinds of sprues. The older kits were more difficult to put together, and more often than not required more work to actually build. By contrast, the newer kits have much more consistency to them. The building instructions are a lot clearer, and the models go together in a much more satisfying manner. Kind of makes sense for 20 years. I don't know if this is the case for every faction in Warhammer, but Games Workshop has come a long way in the last 20 years. And say what you want about push fit models, but when you need a massive force quickly, they do the job very well compared to the same kits from even five years ago. It took quite a while, but eventually we got everything built and I managed to repair several broken already started models to put into the army. Not bad for about eight hours of work between two people. The only thing left to do is get these models based with a simple material and get the models primed and ready to go for day two. Some PVA and beach sand will give each model a nice rocky base with a little variety in gravel size. This mixed with the sculpted elements on a lot of these bases should look pretty nice with a bit of color. Speaking of color. Here's where I wanna go with this army. A silver undercoat will serve as the metallic base. Throw some transparent color through the airbrush or brush some contrast paint to tint that metallic and you have your basic color. In my case, I'm gonna go with phthalo blue, which is a nice cool blue that works really well with green. We're gonna fill in the recesses with high flowing green liquid in the form of Liquitex ink, which is great because the ink is also transparent. So it will blend nicely with the blue and it's very bright when opaque. So the recesses will be nice and vibrant. To finish it all off, I want rusty orange bases, something that screams Martian invasion when you look at the whole army. Three colors that go very well with each other and give you a massive punch of contrast and variety while being pretty easy to paint quickly. There are a ton of models to get through and not a lot of time to get them done. The idea here is that with the same type of metallic base and similar products, you can switch up the colors to your liking and make something that will look like this army in a similar amount of time. Swap out the transparent colors with something else and you get a unique looking army that still stands out. And all of this is designed to work with rattle cans and dry brushing. Let's get the models primed up and start laying down some color and you'll see what I mean. Thank you. 
Everything is primed and ready to go. And since I still have Bo's help, we are going to basically swap minis out for base coating like a conveyor belt. I'm going to paint a model. He'll take it from my hand and then give me another one at the same time so we can get this done in the most efficient way possible. If I was going to do this again, and especially on this scale, I would go for a rattle can of darker silver as a base coat and then spray a brighter and lighter one over the top. But the airbrush is a good way to go if you have one, it's just going to take a little bit longer. So the base coats go down and the conveyor belt is flowing. There are so many models that once we hit the end, I was able to just start the next color on the first model. I switched out the silver for thalo blue. There are a few ways to go with this color. In my case, I can use Golden's high flow transparent color through the airbrush or Liquitex's transparent thalo blue. Either way, it's the same color and it works really well over the metallic base coat. It keeps that metallic sheen and tints the color in a very satisfying way. On the other hand, you could thin down some contrast paint or speed paints and slap it on the model to get a nice color that still looks metallic. So there are quite a few options out there, as long as the paint you use is transparent. Immediately, you already have a dynamic base coat on all the models. The way the transparent color interacts with the metallic color is great. And even between models, there's quite a bit of variety in that color depending on how much was put on. So it's the same, but not the same, and they look good together. Now that the easy part is done, we decided to move on to the most tedious bit, next to building the models. I decided on going with the traditional green glow for Necron models. It's classic and it will work really well with the colors that we have on the models already. I picked up some Liquitex bright green ink to use for this step because it's pretty bright, flows really nicely into the recesses on the models. Now, like I said, there are a ton of recesses on these models, so it's just a matter of sitting down for the long haul and just getting as much knocked out as possible. Bo was able to stay and paint until we got a little over half of the panel lining done, which was a massive help. Having someone to commiserate with during the hard parts was great, and I feel like we got an extra amount of work done because of it. Honestly, if he wasn't here, I think I'd still be panel lining. Sitting for a few hours, talking and painting is one of the best ways to do this hobby, hands down. Things were going well, and the end was in sight. After the panel lining is all knocked out, I came back in with a dry brush of bright silver. This will bring in more shine to the blue and catch all the raised details on each model, really bringing out those sharp edges. The really important detail about this particular step is that it serves as a cleanup for each model on top of just highlighting. Panel lining is pretty difficult, even with ink that flows really nicely. If there is any green that has overspilled onto the model, it gets quickly covered up with this silver and defines the lines of the model. So it's important for highlighting, but makes these models look even better by making us look like better painters than we actually are. And with that step taken care of on every model, it's time for basing. To really make these colors stand out and make sure that everyone can see this army a thousand miles away, I'm going for Rusty Orange. Not only does the orange pigment work really well for covering up any excess paint on the basing material, but it can sneak up the model and add that extra level of depth into the armor. The color is perfect for the blue and green and really helps the model stand out. I'm very happy with the effect and overall look of this basing, and if I ever want to go back and add tufts or extra bits, then it's easy enough to glue something down and just cover it up with more pigment powder. Something I really wanted to make sure of is that at the end of this video, besides having a completed, decent looking playable army, was room for growth. Everything in this army at this point can be considered done, but there are things that could be pushed across the entire army to make improvements. This is definitely what I would call tabletop standard with a little extra. Some basic colors, highlighting, and a nice effect on the weapons with some transitions that could easily be done with a dry brush or an airbrush, and all with just a few colors. The growth would come in the form of pushing each of these things just a little bit further. For example, edge highlighting all the armor with a light blue or bright silver, giving the cables another round of color to make them stand out a bit more, and going back into all of the recessed detail with some yellow greens to really punch up that glow. 
Things that are all great and worth adding eventually, but being able to accomplish a ton of work like this, especially with the help of a friend, is massive motivation to get these models on the table and start playing some games. The extras can come later, and I can take my time with models that I like to use in games. The ones that stand out and start to have stories of their own and give them the extra special treatment to make them look even better. This was an immensely fun project to undertake. A bunch of used models that got an overhaul along with a ton of new ones to add. I'm already starting to make good hobby memories with this army, and I can only hope that that continues very soon. A massive thank you once again to Dale for donating these minis. Now there were other models that Dale donated as well, and we will definitely be getting to those in future videos. So please subscribe if you want to see more massive projects like this one. And of course, thank you to Bo for stopping by, hanging out, and painting a crap load of minis with me. And of course, thank you for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, here are the, there's a lot of Necrons. There's a lot. Here they are. Thanks again.